I'll wait for everybody to sit down. <laughs> it's more relaxed. Okay, well, I will start by introducing myself a little bit. Um, as he said, I started uh, at the age of nine, and it was actually because my father bought a computer for himself, and he really didn't know what to do with it, and it was MS-DOS, and, you know, that was hard. So we bought a book, and together we figured stuff out, and I started building little programs. And it was lots of fun, but really a different world from, uh, from now, I think. Um, uh, at the moment, I'm working at Fox IT, which is why I'm actually also here. Well, not actually why, but... Um, uh, Fox IT made me really, really curious about security, but even before that, uh, something happened, which I will tell you about later. Uh, I'm also a member of uh, Women in Cybersecurity. I don't know if you know them, but there's a worldwide network of 700 women, and um, well, uh, actually that's the reason why I'm, why I'm speaking here, because they asked, and it's a really cool network, uh, and I hope it helps getting more women into security. Uh, and as you can see, I have my own three women in security. Uh, my three daughters, and uh, actually the oldest one uh, got a tablet when she was eight years old, and um, uh, she had a, immediately put a code on it, like a white code, and then after a few days she decided that she wanted to have a real password on it because she thought the code was not safe enough, so I was really proud. <laughs> and um, well, in the middle one, she's six years old, uh, we were at the dinner table, and she said, um, everybody in the world is really, really sweet. And then her, set, her sister said, no, there's also bad guys. She said, yeah, that's right. You have burglars and you have hackers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's my three, uh, three women in cyber. Um, I'm also very curious about who you are. I guess uh, you must be in, uh, in, in that picture, but uh, I'm really curious who of you is still uh, programming at the moment. Oh, that's quite a few. And who of you is um, um, hacking or pen testing? That's a little bit less, but still quite a few. And who is do doing, uh, doing something in management or team management? Okay, that's nice. It's a nice, uh, nice spread. Um, the contents of this talk is, um, um, first I'm going to tell you uh, the way I uh, got into security and the way I, um, uh, I think what happened. And from there, I went on to, uh, at, fir at first it was from building applications that I got aware about security. And then I started working for security companies. So I also have also some nice stories about what, what, what happened there. Uh, and uh, after that, I will try to explain the way I think that uh, organizations that are not really mature yet uh, could try to get there. And of course, we're here at a conference with people who, knew exactly, who know exactly how to do this. They, they have great standards, and OWASP is one of them. Uh, but still, it can be really hard to get this done inside your organization. And also, it can be really hard to uh, convince your management to really invest in this, money-wise or time-wise. So I will end with um, some hints about that. Um, so I'll start with the story. Um, when I was uh, programming myself, I think I started my first full-time job in 2001, but before I was, of course, I was uh, going to university and building stuff. But then I started to work for an employer, and you had to build uh, lots of, um, uh, lots of uh, applications. I did ma mainly web applications. And actually, uh, I tried to be as secure as possible, but, um, uh, you know, some, some, some things take time, and uh, sometimes you really don't know what you're doing. And, uh, you know, we were just having fun. We were putting things on a web. It was 2001. Hacking was not that, you know, common. Of course, we did it with each other sometimes, but it, it wasn't really an issue. And, um, yeah, from there on, I, I started more like managing projects and managing development teams. Um, and... Um, uh, at, at one point, um, I was working for a company which had uh, three product development teams, which were all um, uh, looking at me. Uh, and one of the teams was actually bought from another company. Actually, not the team was bought, but the software was bought. And um, what happened was, this was a web application, but it was not really um, meant to uh, use outside of the office. So it was running in a browser, but it was not, never ever supposed to be online. Well, what, of course, happened 
was that uh, management decided at one point that uh, it should be online because it's a nice product and everybody wants this. So, you know, um, I got the, 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 the assignment to ask uh, the team uh, what's needed to put this uh, application on the web. Well, the team started laughing <laughs> and then they started crying because it was serious. <laughs> So um, I asked them, you know, what needs to be done, and please tell me what is critical, what is, uh, uh, what is average, what is, what is, you know, fixed sometime. So we made a nice list of things that needs to be fixed. We made a nice estimate for uh, uh, see how much time it took, and it would take, take about five or six months to, take, to get this application to fit for the web. Well, management really, really didn't believe this. Actually, they used my list against me because they said, okay, just fix the first two points, and then we go. <laughs> so we started crying again, <laughs> and then I decided to, to do something else, and I, um, I, I went looking around for a security company to help me, and I let them do a pen test on the, uh, on the application, uh, and to write a nice report, and to, you know, emphasize all the, uh, all the uh, very uh, um, dangerous things that could happen. Uh, and I put another estimate on top of that, how much time it would take to fix. And, well, it is a happy story, because in the end, they decided to never put it on the web. <laughs> <laughs> and to start over with a new application with the same functionality and a plus a, a bit more. So that's a, a happy end. But, of course, I think you all know many, many stories where there's no happy end. Uh <clears throat> so um, the company that I hired to do the pen test, I, um, uh, I went working for them because it was really nice and they wrote a nice report and I was interested. So it was, I thought, okay, maybe security is a really nice area to work in. Well, I, have, I haven't regret, regretted it since, so uh, that's still very nice. Um, but after that, I went working for, uh, for Fox IT. I don't know whether you know them or not. They're very famous in Holland, but not, not everywhere. Um, and. Um, uh, preparing for this talk, I went talking to um, one of the, our audit guys. Uh, so they have also a, a pen test team, and they are going to clients to do th the same work as the other company was doing for me. So I asked him whether this happened a lot, that they start testing an application, and they actually have to tell the people that build it, you know, guys, I'm sorry, but I think you need to start over. And he said, well, it used to happen quite a lot, uh, but now things are, uh, uh, are developing and pe uh, companies are getting more secure. Developers know, know more what they are doing. So um, it, it doesn't hap happen so often anymore that we really have to say, you know, guys, th th this is going to take you months to fix. What, what does happen a lot is um, uh, they do pen tests and a, a report is written um, and then uh, they are asked again to do another pen test, and then uh, they conclude that, you know, so the, the issues are fixed, or they are not really fixed, because the guys that have to fix the issues are the same guys that made the mistakes in the first place. They, 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 they don't know actually what they are doing, uh, which is quite a big problem, because it's a good step that they decided to take a pen test, but they cannot really act on the consequences of this pen test. So uh, another thing that he said is um, nowadays developers are using um, more and more templates and uh, that's good templates or open standards or uh, program, uh, things programmed by the community. And this works really real well as, as, as long as you are, you are using the right version of a good template, but uh, it works better than um, uh, programming, you know, coding for yourself, because a lot of people th thought about it. And he notices also with when pen testing that uh, they found, find uh, a lot less mistakes uh, than they did before. Only there's one little problem, and sometimes you want the, the application to do something that's outside of your templates, and then you have to build a, 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 a custom uh, thing for it. And he says, in this case, uh, when actually the coders are not really used to building for themselves anymore, the add-ons are even buggier than, you know, the original code would be if we t would test. So I thought it was a very uh, interesting development that uh, you think it's 
uh, it's going okay if people are using standards, but if you go outside them, you have to be extra, you know, um, uh, aware that it can, be, it can go wrong. So um, that was really nice. And I also asked him something else, um, and that is um, actually when you pen test something, what are you doing? And he said, well, I don't know, uh, which one of you were pen testers? You, can you explain me what you do when somebody asks you to pen test their application? Or maybe you can't hear. Yeah, so I, I um, start my intercepting proxy and then do a lot of requests to the, to the web application and uh, try to break things by uh, issuing requests that the application doesn't mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, it doesn't expect. Okay. And are you, do you, are you using any tools? Yeah, uh, burps, burp yeah. suite, mm -hmm. mainly. And some, uh, some Nikto and some other, uh, other tools, okay. mainly burp. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and, um, well, that's ex exactly what he told me. Uh, they're, they're running a, a few tools on, uh, they're also using Nessus and some other tools. Uh, and once the, the, then you're doing your specific requests, and what he says is actually when the tools are finished, you really start to think, how can I break this? I want to break this, and I don't know, I don't mind what way, and really specific for this application. And um, also for myself, since I started coding and not really thinking about breaking it, uh, this was, uh, uh, and I read some trainings also that we do at our office, it's really a different mindset if you are looking uh, at an application uh, and, and, and trying to break it, uh, then you're trying to build something. Um, so what he told me is actually that uh, he would like, he's not a coder, but he's a breaker, uh, as the, uh, on the schedule also uh, is, uh, is pointed out. Uh, he, he would like for every coder to be a breaker, to be able to think like a breaker. And uh, I joined uh, Hack in the Box um, at, in Amsterdam. Uh, and I was playing uh, capture the flag there, <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I learned that I, le I need to learn a lot more. But uh, it was really fun to to you know think this way and, uh, and 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 actually really different from coding. I I think personally, it helps you that you can you know build a script for to 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 do something. But first, you have to think what you want to do. So um, uh, think uh, maybe. One of you is inside uh, such a company, but you are a company and you did pen testing, and the pen test said, you know, it's quite a crappy application that you built. You need to do something else. What are you going to do to make it villain proof? Now, I already, already said before, you really n need to make people think like a villain. So the coders, the testers, but also the product manager has to think, you know, what no, not only what happens when an idiot is behind the keyboard? No, what's, what happens when uh, the villain is, uh, is trying to, uh, to use my application? Well, um, and also when we, we have coders in our uh, training, we notice that they are actually, once they get the mindset, they are actually quite good at breaking it because they know the structures, which is very nice, but they do need to, to get this awareness. So something else that you can do, and uh, I, I'm not, I, I just use my, you know, the standards or my standards or Scrum or anything that's, uh, that goes and that helps, but uh, I think OWASP has a really nice standard, uh, uh, the, the open sum, which is, which is really nice and which also can help you gradually change your, your processes. But also the Microsoft uh, Secure Development Lifecycle is a really, really nice guideline to use if you want to improve. Um, but uh, for me personally, I think that, uh, that you really should think about what happens now. So what happens in your development process? Uh, what are you experiencing now? What are you missing? And then really start adding some security to it, maybe also changing your process a little bit, but also decide that sometimes things are really outside of your team and not really uh, 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 you, you will not be able to solve, uh, solve it within, um, within your own team. Um, so start with easy changes. So I don't know whether you 
are doing this already on a daily basis, but um, for instance, um, the automatic pen test tools that, uh, that we mentioned, um, you can also run them in your, in your uh, nightly builds if you are not doing that yet. So that's really, uh, it costs maybe a lot of money to get the right tools, costs a little, a little uh, ex um, you know, time to, to implement them right, but it's really easy actually to make this step. Um, another easy change can be, how many times are you working on, a, on an architecture, an application architecture? It's really at the beginning of your process usually, and it's not something that, that, you, that you do every week. So please, if you start an architecture, really involve you know, all the people within your organization that are, have a security mind, but maybe also from outside the organization. <clears throat> it's a small step, but it's, it's really, uh, it can really help. Well, you can also make a backup plan, and well, this may be a little bit far-fetched, because you, of course you cannot ask your customers that are using your, uh, your product to, to start uh, using endpoint protection or to start network monitoring. It's maybe a little bit far-fetched, but you can do it for yourself. You can, you can think about these things, and when you're a serious development company, you, you might consider using network monitoring. It's quite a good idea. And that you might consider using a good uh, endpoint protection um, solution not, the one, not one that's based on whitelisting, but one that is actually looking at the behavior of the, of the applications. And you can learn from it if your tools are running on the same system or your, uh, your product. Okay, now, now is the hardest part. Because you know maybe better than me that you want uh, inside your uh, development process, you want to improve it and you want to, you know, you want to really secure develop but your manager is not going to give you time for this because the product needs to be finished. And sometimes they do, but in a lot of cases they don't. So um, this is a really old one, <laughs> uh, but you probably all, uh, all know this. Uh, it's the amount of uh, cost you have uh, if you fix a bug early in the process or late in the process. I also have a variation, which I thought was very funny. But um, the, actually, the bug doesn't get bigger, but it costs more to fix it. Uh, and the same goes for vulnerabilities or security uh, problems. Uh, there, there's nothing different about it. It's, it's still, if you are very late, you're already online, you need to fix it in product production environments. It's, it's so, so much more expensive. And I think that, that management is really sensitive to, uh, to arguments like this. Um, now this is another example, uh, it's more like a numbers example of the same, um, that, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's expensive to, to fix bugs on a production environment. And there's one thing that's not even taken into account here, uh, and that's when a client is going to sue you because he has data loss or he has uh, reputation damage uh, because your application wasn't safe. So. Um, uh, I think these arguments are very uh, important to mention and also to repeat uh, to your management. And um, another thing that is really important is um, you have to spread the feeling, and I think only the people that are security aware are able to do this, um, that security is a, a shared responsibility. It's not a technical problem. It's everybody has to to help to make stuff secure. And I think I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but, uh, <laughs> but you are the, the people that can spread the word inside your own organizations if it's necessary. Um, and in my, from my own experience, uh, g sometimes getting a report uh, from an external organization can really help. And it can be, can be on, on different uh, subjects. It can be on your application, but it can also be on your security, the security maturity of your organization. Uh, and also sometimes uh, letting someone help uh, to get things better. Um, now another thing is that I think security still should be a choice. So if you are having a hard time um, getting the things that you want, in your organization uh, security-wise, then maybe you should, you should also explain why you want them. And maybe, you know, 
don't want everything at once, but just start with the, the import most important things. Uh, and, and make it an, a conscious decision for the decision maker. So also tell him what happens if he, if he decides not to, and then agree upon you know, what you are, are going to do and what you're not going to do. Well, that's all that I have uh, slide-wise. Uh, does anyone have um, any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. Uh, oh, the, the the question was: Do you think security is really a choice, or is it just a question of people not knowing uh, what they are doing? Well, I think security in general is not a choice, but specific security on specific uh, um, uh, sp specific measures on specific uh, uh, type uh, uh, parts of your process is really a choice. Uh, and also um, the consequences of uh, not taking a certain secure me security measures, measure can be acceptable. It depends on the right. I usually get involved pretty late in the process, near the production phase. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you explained that bugs are, are pretty expensive then to solve that. Yep. Yeah, you can. You can actually also during development start pen testing already. Um, uh, once you have enough, uh, you know, code ready, but you can just start. Uh, and I think the the uh, open sum also describes this on which parts on on your process you can do this. Uh, and actually, if you're developing, I don't know whether are you developing agile or not. Well, yeah. No, your I mean your team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, uh, um, he said that uh, it differs per client in, in which states they, they are involved in the pen testing, and is there a, a way to convince them to do it in, in a different stage? stage? Um, I think there is, especially when you have a good relationship with this client. Okay. Of course, you have a lot of clients that just call. You know, I'm, I'm almost finished. Can you help me with a pen test? Then, then you know, there's. But for every other application that they are uh, asking you to pen test, you can build a relation and and tell them that you know involve me earlier, or maybe let me even look at your architecture before you start. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know that we are using Nessus and Burp. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, the question was uh, that I, I talked about nightly builds and uh, uh, testing in your, uh, in your nightly builds uh, and which pen tests I um, would recommend. Well, I, I, I know that uh, Nessus and Burp are really good, but I, I'm not a pen tester, so I, I can't really give a good advice on that. I think it also depends on, you have to look at, you know, how easy is it to install them and to incorporate them in your, uh, in your process. But there's probably people here who know. Okay, and the question was, I talked about my children and he wants to know um, uh, what I think is absolutely ne necessary to tell my children security-wise. Uh, well, uh, you know, I, th I think I tell them about everything. Uh, if they start coding, I will tell them, tell them different things, but you know, uh, things like uh, don't put your privacy, privacy, private things online, don't put your photos online, uh, you know, don't uh, communicate with anybody that you don't know. Uh, but also lock your devices <laughs> and, uh, and things like that. Yeah, I think it's too much to, to uh, and it starts from really small and, you know.
much for the testimony. What a great talk. Thank you very much.